How do you become a college pole vaulter? Let's talk about that today. Welcome to the pole vault dog vlog. Pole vault clogs. <laughs> Where we talk about everything pole vault. Sorry last week's video was a little short. I was in Colorado. Not really this, I filmed a lot of stuff. And if you want to see what I filmed, there's a video right here. We had a good time. Commercials. VS Athletics still does all the incredibly awesome stuff that I say every week, but they just told me in December they're doing this thing called Pole Stampede. Hey Sean, what's Pole Stampede? Let me tell you, Squish. Pole Stampede is when you buy three poles, you get two free. That deal just might make my brain ick. Oh yeah, use these codes. It starts in December. Holy deals. Bruce Caldwell also sells his nifty little rock back pole vault bag. You can buy on VS Athletics with those same codes you just saw that are showing up again right here. I mean, if you're gonna buy 300 pole vault poles, you might as well have some slick little bag to put it in. Am I right? Buy a ton of bags. Before we get started, Daniel Ryland, no, I said that backwards. Scott Houston was down at Daniel Ryland's place this last week and doing all sorts of fun shenanigans and I wish I was there. I got invited, I just couldn't make it. For example, the hot pole vault. Opposite hand pole vault. Scott Houston going for eight feet six inches. Lefty. Ooh. Zero left pole vaults. Oh, you little punk. <laughs> they did one arm pole vaulting. Not to mention beach vaulting, cause I mean, if you go to Daniel Ryland's, you gotta beach vault. I love Daniel Ryland, I love Scott Houston, they're both awesome. Ryland pole vault's kinda like a pole vault six flags. Without the creepy mascots running around and bees. In terms of what we were doing in Vegas, we need your help. We're creating a non-profit organization to be the voice of the pole vault. A voice for pole vault education. A voice for clubs and high schools. A voice for elite pole vaulters, youth pole vaulters, and masters pole vaulters. A voice for pole vault meets, whether they're on tracks or they're in streets. A voice for pole vault safety. I could go on and on and on, but we're creating a voice for the pole vault community so our sport can grow. We're building the infrastructure right now, but we're trying to launch this thing around the pole vault summit. At this moment, we are exploring funding and sponsorship opportunities. We're reaching out to people and businesses who want to make this voice we're creating louder. That's where you guys come in. So this is my way of reaching out to you guys, the pole vault community, the thing we are trying to give a voice to, to help blow this thing up. So if you think you can help us with the funding or the sponsorships, or if you have a connection to a company or your company and they want to help us and help this thing grow, we would love to talk to you about how to make that happen and so you can be an early investor in this thing. Let me know. Send it to my email, right here. I'll put it down here, unless you want me to hide my face. But seriously, if you shoot me an email, I'll have to tell you what it's all about. So, another reason to talk to me about it. Can't wait to launch this thing. I'm, s I'm not good at secrets. Without further ado, I will answer the question I've been promising for a few weeks, how to become a college pole vaulter in a few easy steps. It really isn't that hard. Step one, get good grades. If you can't even get into college, there's no way you're gonna be able to pull vault. So you have to be able to get into college so you have to get good grades. Step two, start pole vaulting. If you haven't started yet, you should probably start because you need to be able to know how to pole vault before you get into college unless you're a multi-event athlete. Step three, compete and jump high. That's it, that's all you gotta do. This vlog is short and sweet. See you guys next time. Yeah, no, I'm gonna talk more because I talk way too much. So you did all those things and then eventually what will happen is if you jump high enough or place well enough at the state meet, coaches and schools will contact you. If you build it, they will call. But what if they don't call? I No one's calling me, but I want to compete in college. What do I do? Here's what you do. Step one, go to their website and fill out their questionnaire. Every sports team has a questionnaire now. Coaches love it when you do the work for them. And then they don't have to ask you all those questions. They just know all the answers. Double win. Two. Uh, 
I mixed up my numbers. Call the coach and head coach. That way you can call them and you get to ask them the questions. Emails also work, but from my experience having an email box full of stuff, it, you, it's easy to lose the emails. If you call them, you're more likely to talk to somebody instead of just kind of get shushed away. I don't even know what number I'm on anymore. Three. I mixed it all up. Three. Go to the school you want to go to pole vault camps. I've seen it so many times that if you go to their camps, they see you vault. They get to work with you before they actually get to work with you and they're more likely to see what kind of person you are, see if the mesh is well, see how you vault, and then they ask you to be a part of their team and it's easier to recruit. And then after all of that stuff, you have number four. Choose your school. This is a little more complicated so I have to build some stuff. New view. All right, so here's kind of how this works. You got D1, D2, D3, and then over here you got N, A, I, A, which I don't know anything about, so we'll just ignore that one. So to walk on, always need to go 12 to 13. Sorry, I have my chart backwards compared to the way I wrote it. So let's just ignore that one. That didn't happen, guys. Division one. 14, 15, D2, D3, and the girls. And that's just to walk on. That's not all that other crazy stuff that you have to do there. But then there's scholarships. Division one, yep, yep. No athletic scholarships. How long the season is? Eight to nine months, eight to nine months, maybe about five months. Just realize I should do this. Is that better? Just remember, I didn't set these in stone. It depends on what conference you're on. Some Division One conferences are way more competitive than other ones. Division Two, same thing. Division Three, same exact thing. Like I tell everybody, everyone who asks me, that I get asked this every week, is this stuff doesn't matter. If you're gonna take any advice from me, the best advice I have is go to a college that has your major. Pole vault's fun, pole vault's important, pole vault can change your life. But when you're done, it's hard to make a living and pay rent doing pole vault. Secondly, the second best advice I can give you is when you look at colleges, look at as many as you can, talk to as many coaches as you can, do on as many visits as you can. And when you're done, sit back and pick the college that feels right in your guts. Don't do the one that makes sense in your brain. You gotta live there for four years and you have to hang out with these people for four years, which are gonna be your family. And if you're already feeling kind of uneasy about them after one day visit, four years. This is about as simple as it can get. If you guys need more information, ask me questions in the description below and I can make another video, part two. Hope this helps. Let's, uh, let's go review some videos. All right, the first video review is by Cade. Definitely aggressive. I think you just throw your arms a little late. So, plant looks great. Oh my God, like, that is gorgeous and then it's still back and you're already swinging through. So once you hit the pole, like hit it and then throw it back right away. It's kind of like throwing a med ball. Like if you want to throw a med ball really hard into a wall, you don't go catch it and then throw it back. It's like, God, you gotta get rid of it really quick. So I think once you hit it, throw those arms in the swing at the same time so you can stay in a hollow position and invert and pole vault. Good looking jump, man. I dig it. Do the last one. I only got two this week. All right, this is from Kyle, and Kyle had a really interesting, um, we had a good conversation. He was saying, this is an older video of him where he's a jumper. He doesn't like his plant, and he watched the, my jumper cruncher video, and in the next video, he's trying to be a cruncher, but he's having a problem getting his step outside. So definitely crunching more, but he wants to get his step out. So here's what I told him. So I told him you really can't have a free takeoff as a cruncher because a free takeoff means you're in the air before the pole touches the back of the box and you're getting all the energy. And that's just kind of, before the pole bends, that's kind of how the definition is. So as a cruncher, your foot's on the ground and the pole's bent. So by trying to have a free takeoff and be a cruncher, it just, it just doesn't work. It's trying to put a cat in water. It's like, bad just... Well, it's probably worse than that because you can probably put a cat in water, but you can't have a free takeoff and 
So he asked me, what one would I recommend? I recommend keeping the jump, that awesome jump that he has. But he likes the crunch because it's helping with his plant. So I told him to keep working on that plant the same way he was with the crunch. It's above his head better, he's throwing his arms better, I think because he can feel the pole, which usually happens to taking off a bit outside. Just a little, can't feel the pole yet. I had him lean forward just a little bit, keep that awesome plant in this video, and then jump like that video, because guys, I love that. Hope that makes sense. Thanks for sending the video guys. I'll reset the counter so there's three free ones. And if you wanna donate five bucks so I can eat food this week, that would be great too. Guys, that's about it for the vlog this week. Uh, last little update is, these are supposed to be car decals. You can't really, see. it looks like this. It's a little too small, uh, but it looks great on a phone. I don't think, you, I mean, you can put them on your car, but it looks cool on my phone. I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of these. I might sell them, I might just keep a bunch of them and hand them out to cool places I'm going. I also got stickers. Can't see that one either. Looks like, looks like that. And then I also got a black one too. Ooh. And last but not least, I got what you guys asked more than anything else. I got this really cool lanyard. Team Hoot, both sides. What do you guys think? I'll probably put them on my website. And then in the last little update, the last, the last little two big things I'm trying to get done is I'm trying to create that coaches program to help you coaches be better at coaching the pole vault. It's like a coaching pedagogy. It hasn't even started because this Vegas nonprofit thing came up and that's been taking up a lot of my time. Also, I really wanna get these live streams going, but I need to buy a laptop. I would like to be able to edit videos and pictures on it, so it needs to be all beefed up. So any computer nerds out there wanna suggest cool computers for me so I can get these live stream things going, I think it'll be cool too. Yes, with that being said, there are more than one ways to pole vault. Try some of the stuff I said. If it works, great. If not, throw it away. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I want you to vault as high as you can. Please, if you know somebody who can donate to the nonprofit thing, it's gonna be awesome. I'm getting a call from my girlfriend. Say hi, you guys are in the next vlog. It's gonna be out tomorrow. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. 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 Say subscribe. <laughs> All right, life is meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there. I will see you guys next week. Beep. Bye.